Hello friends, Christian here with Brick Life Crisis again. Today we're taking a look at another Mega Constructs Call of Duty set. This is the ATV Raid. It's recommended for ages 10 and up and features 116 pieces including one micro action figure. This is set number GCN95. which was purchased at Walmart for about $10. Um, I would suggest looking at Walmart if you're interested in this, otherwise maybe Amazon is a another place to check it out. Sadly, as you know, with Toys R Us going out of business, the distribution for Mega Constructs has been pretty spotty. Um, so in my experience thus far, Walmart and Amazon are your best bets. Um, I've been asked to do some more Mega Constructs stuff, so here we are. Let's go ahead and crack it open, take a look, and uh, see what we think. probably two-thirds of the way through the build, but I just wanted to point out these two green corner pieces. Those are kind of interesting. I haven't seen those before. Um, they have those uh, open studs in the corner, which I just thought was kind of cool. Uh, also, the this is kind of a rather large custom plate. It has the headlight built in. It's just kind of a large piece with molded rims and such. And there's another one on the back that's a little bit smaller. Uh, but has more curvature to it. Just some interesting pieces that I hadn't seen before that I thought you might be interested in. Also, there are a couple of these bar, wool bar, uh, front and back cage pieces. Uh, so we'll see how those fit on, but those clearly are custom, uh, which is kind of cool and kind of frustrating at the same time. Uh, I mean, part of the reason we buy these things is to be able to build them, but there's just some things you can't really do very well with standard pieces. So. They've created these custom ones. All right, here we have it, the ATV attack. As you can see, we have the micro action figure as well as the ATV itself. All right, and here we have the ATV itself. As I mentioned, we have a couple of rather large uh, custom pieces for the bumpers on the front as well as the back. Uh, there's some nice knobby tires that move pretty freely, and uh, that's a, kind of a nice thing. The underside doesn't have a whole lot of detail, um, but if you look back behind the wheels, you can see a little bit of red in there. Um, those are supposed to be shocks, which is kind of cool. There are printed headlights that are pretty subtle, um, but uh, that's kind of nice. And there's also, it looks like some print up here on the edge of that piece, and I'm not sure what that's supposed to be, but it's on both of them, on both sides, which is just kind of interesting. There's also an additional print on the front, which is supposed to be, uh, whoops, there we go. Get you a closer look at this. There we go. So that's kind of your speedometer, instrument panel, what have you. Uh, and that goes on there fairly well and that moves a bit so you can pretend to be turning from left to right. The wheels themselves don't actually turn, but you can turn that steering wheel thing. Um, you have these small 2x2 two two great pieces that uh, act as footrests. You have these solar panel things back here that uh, you can imagine our solar power uh, things for uh, charging a radio or something like that, or um, who knows, whatever you want. You also have some uh, plates up here that would allow for the storage of some accessories or perhaps um, places for a figure to sit or something like that. But overall, I think it's a pretty good little vehicle. I like the coloring with the gunmetal gray and the dark green. Pretty cool overall. Let's go ahead and take a look at the action figure in a bit more detail. Since I know a lot of you are primarily LEGO fans and don't necessarily have a lot of experience with these Mega Constructs figures, I thought I would show you how they are constructed. And you do assemble them, they, they come like this in the package. So basically, you have a set of legs, and they are fairly well articulated. They move fairly well at the hip and at the knee. Um, they can splay and bend and all that. Uh, once in a while you'll even get some where the boots can turn in and out. This is not one of those, but that has happened on occasion. Um, you'll then have a waist piece with a fatter end at the back for the rear end, and then the crotch is a bit thinner so that the legs can move. Then you will typically have a belt piece, and you'll notice that the belt has these little pins on it, and that is so that you can attach accessories later on, which is kind of nice. So the belt goes on, and then the torso goes on, snaps in place like so. Uh, the arms are articulated so that they can spin, they're kind of on a ball joint. Um, you also have articulation at the elbow that you can bend and twist, and at the wrist. 
So you have a lot of nice articulation with these guys. Um, they oftentimes will have uh, some sort of backpack strap piece that can go over like so. The heads are typically molded with the uh, headgear if they have any, either hair or in this case it looks like a do-rag, sometimes it's a hat or a helmet, uh, but they're fairly well detailed. It's got a nice uh, kind of goatee going on along with some sideburns, good eyebrows, and that just snaps onto the ball joint of the neck and that gives them the ability to look up and down, left and right, so it gives them a little bit more posability than you might get on some other figures from other lines. And then the backpack is similar to the old G.I. Joe backpacks. It's just got that peg there, and it goes into the hole on the back, like so. And you have a fairly well-equipped figure. You'll notice the backpack straps have these pegs along with the belt, like I showed you before, and the backpack itself has these straps. And that is so that you can take certain accessories, like this pocket, for example, and you can attach it so that you have some extra stuff. Uh, this particular figure also includes a knife uh, that you could, for example, put on the uh, belt here on the side. All right, so there you can see he's got that kerchief around his neck and that allows him to cover his face while he's riding. And he's got those knee pads down there. These figures typically include a stand as well. Uh, and these stands, rather than just being a uh, plate of some kind, they uh, typically have just a little bit of shape to them. So it kind of looks like some terrain. Uh, the weapons are also typically uh, modular in design. This lower piece has the handle and then the receptacles for the barrel and the magazine and all that stuff. So the way that works is the barrel has a little pin at the end and it just snaps into the hole there. The magazine just slides into the rail like so. The stop is like the barrel, it just sticks into a hole. And then along the top, sometimes you'll get a scope, other times you'll just get a carry handle like this, but this is a fairly good representation of an M16. And then they've also included this kind of rubbery hose piece that has these uh, eyelets at the end so that you can place it around the barrel and the stock. And there you have a sling for the rifle so you can sling it over his shoulder while he's driving the ATV. And here we have that micro action figure, and they truly are action figures. They are very well detailed, very well articulated with uh, lots of accessories and that sort of thing. So these are kind of a step above as far as realism goes versus Lego minifigures and you know, minifigures from other you know, block companies. Um, and they're certainly more articulated by a long shot. Um, so depending on what your interests are, you might uh, appreciate these figures. Um, to me, they remind me a lot of the G.I. Joe action figures I had as a kid, so um, I like them for that reason, but I think Lego figures have their own charm, which is more appropriate for the, that type of thing, city builds and that sort of stuff. But anyway, just wanted to show you some of the differences and some of the detail on these guys in case you weren't familiar with them. All right, and here we have our hero riding on the ATV. As you can see, he's got the rifle strapped to his back, thanks to the sling that is included, and he is able to ride fairly comfortably. There's a bit of a seat there, although I have him kind of in a standing position at the moment. Uh, the ATV is perhaps a little bit oversized compared to the action figure, um, but not too bad and it allows for the possibility of putting some additional accessories and maybe even an, an additional figure on there. But overall, I think it's pretty good. Alright, this set, as I said, retails for about $10. I picked it up at Walmart, but it's also available through Amazon and perhaps some other places. But um, be wary, these sets are not easy to find and when you do find them, oftentimes they are from scalpers or third-party resellers and they oftentimes will charge a pretty hefty premium. Uh, so as I said, $10 is the retail price, but it's not uncommon to see these for double that or more on places like eBay or even Amazon resellers and stuff. So just be aware, depending on how important the set is to you, uh, you may be able to get it for a bit less, but uh, you know the scalper market is out there, just be aware. 
Alright, this has been Christian with Brick Life Crisis, taking a look at the Mega Constructs Call of Duty ATV Raid. If you enjoyed the video, please leave us a like. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those below. And as always, thanks for watching. Take care. Bye for now.